Abhidharma Sanskrit or Abhidhamma Pali are ancient 3rd century BCE and later Buddhist texts which contain detailed scholastic reworkings of doctrinal material appearing in the Buddhist sutras according to schematic classifications. The Abhidhamma works do not contain systematic philosophical treatises but summaries or abstract and systematic lists. Topic Overview According to Khalid Cox, Abhidhamma started as an elaboration of the teachings of the suttas, but later developed independent doctrines. The literal translation of the term Abhidharma is unclear. Two possibilities are most commonly given Abhi, higher, special, exceeding and dharma teaching philosophy thus making abhidharma the higher teachings a b h i about and dharma teaching translating it instead as about the teaching or even meta teaching Compared to the colloquial sutras, Abhidharma texts are much more technical, analytic and systematic in content and style. The Theravadin and Sarvastivadin Abhidharmikas generally considered the Abhidharma to be the pure and literal description of ultimate truth and an expression of unsullied wisdom prajna, while the sutras were considered conventional samuti and figurative teachings, given by the Buddha to specific people, at specific times, depending on specific worldly circumstances circumstances. They held that Abhidharma was taught by the Buddha to his most eminent disciples, and that therefore this justified the inclusion of Abhidharma texts into their scriptural canon. Some in the West have considered the Abhidhamma to be the core of what is referred to as Buddhism and psychology. Other writers on the topic such as Nyanaponika Thera and Dan Lusthaus describe Abhidhamma as a Buddhist phenomenology while Noah Ronkin and Kenneth Anada equate it with process philosophy. Bhikkhu Bodhi writes that the system of the Abhidhamma Pitaka is simultaneously a philosophy, a psychology and an ethics, all integrated into the framework of a program for liberation." Abhidharma analysis also extended into the fields of ontology, epistemology and metaphysics. The prominent Western scholar of Abhidharma, Eric Frauwallner has said that these Buddhist systems are among the major achievements of the classical period of Indian philosophy. <inaudible> Origin <inaudible> According to Theravada tradition In the commentaries of Theravada Buddhism it was held that the Abhidhamma was not a later addition to the tradition, but rather represented in the fourth week of Gautama Buddha's enlightenment. Optimistic Devas created a beautiful jeweled chamber. Buddha, after spending the third week dispelling mistrust and sitting inside it meditated on what was later known as the higher doctrine. His mind and body were so purified that six colored rays came out of his body. Blue, yellow, red, white, orange and a mixture of these five. The mixed color represented all these noble qualities. Later, he traveled to the Trayastrimsa and taught the Abhidhamma to the divine beings that dwelled there, including his deceased mother Maya, who had re-arisen as a celestial being. 
The tradition holds that the Buddha gave daily summaries of the teachings given in the heavenly realm to the Bhikkhu Sariputta, who passed them on. The Abhidhamma is thus presented as a pure and undiluted form of the teaching that was too difficult for most practitioners of the Buddha's time to grasp. Instead, the Buddha taught by the method related in the various suttas, giving appropriate, immediately applicable teachings as each situation arose, rather than attempting to set forth the Abhidhamma in all its complexity and completeness. Thus, there is a similarity between the traditions of the Adhidhamma and that of the Mahayana, which also claimed to be too difficult for the people living in the Buddha's time. Topic. According to other traditions The Sarvastivadin Vaibhasikas held that the Buddha and his disciples taught the Abhidharma, but that it was scattered throughout the canon. Only after his death was the Abhidharma compiled systematically by his elder disciples and was recited by Ananda at the first Buddhist council. The Satrantika school, those who rely on the sutras, rejected the status of the Abhidharma as being Buddhavacana, word of the Buddha. They held it was the work of different monks after his death, and that this was the reason different Abhidharma schools varied widely in their doctrine. Topic. According to scholars Scholars generally believe that the Abhidharma emerged after the time of the Buddha, in around the 3rd century BCE. Therefore, the seven Abhidhamma works are generally claimed by scholars not to represent the words of the Buddha himself, but those of disciples and scholars. Factors contributing to its development could have been the growth of monastic centers, the growing support for the Buddhist Sangha, and outside influences from other religious groups. As the last major division of the canon, the Abhidhamma works have had a checkered history. They were not accepted as canonical by the Mahasangika school and several other schools. Another school included most of the Kudaka Nikaya within the Abhidhamma Pataka. Also, the Pali version of the Abhidhamma is a strictly Theravada collection, and has little in common with the Abhidhamma works recognized by other Buddhist schools. The Theravadan Abhidhamma is in some respects rather skeletal, with the details not entirely fleshed out. According to Rupert Gethin however, obvious care and ingenuity have gone into its development. The Abhidhamma philosophies of the various early schools often disagree on doctrine and belong to the period of divided Buddhism as opposed to undivided Buddhism. The earliest texts of the Pali Canon, the Sutta Nipata, parts of the Jatakas, and the first four Nikayas of the Suttapitaka have no mention of the texts of the Abhidhamma Pitaka. The Abhidhamma is also not mentioned at the report of the first Buddhist council, directly after the death of the Buddha. This report of the First Council does mention the existence of the Vinaya and the five Nikayas of the Suttapitaka. According to L. S. Cousins, the suttas deal with sequences and processes, while the Abhidhamma describes occasions and events. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Variety of Abhidhamic teachings and books. Numerous Abhidharma traditions arose in India, roughly during the period from the 2nd or 3rd century BCE to the 5th century CE. The 7th century Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang reportedly collected Abhidharma texts from seven different traditions. The various Abhidhamic traditions have very fundamental philosophical disagreements with each other. 
These various Abhidhamic theories were, together with differences in Vinaya, the major cause for the majority of splits in the monastic Sangha, which resulted in the fragmented early Buddhist landscape of the 18 early Buddhist schools. However these differences did not mean the existence of totally independent sects, as noted by Rupert Gethin. At least some of the schools mentioned by later Buddhist tradition are likely to have been informal schools of thought in the manner of Cartesians, British empiricists, or Kantians for the history of modern philosophy. In the modern era, only the Abhidharmas of the Sarvastivadins and the Theravadins have survived intact, each consisting of seven books, with the addition of the Sariputra Abhidharma. The Theravada Abhidharma, the Abhidhamma Pataka, discussed below, is preserved in Pali, while the Sarvastivadin Abhidharma is mostly preserved only in Chinese, the likely Sanskrit original texts having been lost, though some Tibetan texts are still extant. A small number of other Abhidharma texts of unknown origin are preserved in translation in the Chinese canon. These different traditions have some similarities, suggesting either interaction between groups or some common ground antedating the separation of the schools. <laughs> <laughs> Doctrine The Abhidharma text's field of inquiry extends to the entire Buddhadharma, since their goal was to outline, systematize and analyze all of the teachings. Abhidharmic thought also extends beyond the sutras to cover new philosophical and psychological ground which is only implicit in sutras or not present at all. There are certain doctrines which were developed or even invented by the Abhidharmikas and these became grounds for the debates among the different early Buddhist schools. <laughs> <laughs> Dharma theory The base upon which the entire Abhidharma system rests is the Dharma theory and this theory penetrated all the early schools. For the Abhidharmikas, the ultimate components of existence, the elementary constituents of experience were called dharmas Pali, dhammas. This concept has been variously translated as factors, call it cox, psychic characteristics, bronkhorst, phenomena nyanaponika and psychophysical events ronkin the early buddhist scriptures give various lists of the constituents of the person such as the five skandhas the six or 18 dhatas and the 12 sense bases in abhidharma literature these lists of dharmas systematically arranged and they were seen as the ultimate entities or momentary events which make up the fabric of people's experience of reality. The idea was to create an exhaustive list of all possible phenomena that make up the world. The conventional reality of substantial objects and persons is merely a conceptual construct imputed by the mind on a flux of dharmas. However, dharmas are never seen as individually separate entities, but are always dependently conditioned by other dharmas in a stream of momentary constellations of dharmas, constantly coming into being and vanishing, always in flux. Perception and thinking is then seen as a combination of various dharmas. Satas awareness events are never experienced on their own, but are always intentional and hence accompanied by various mental factors .In a constantly flowing stream of experience occurrences, human experience is thus explained by a series of dynamic processes and their patterns of relationships with each other. 
Buddhist Abhidharma philosophers then sought to explain all experience by creating lists and matrices of these dharmas, which varied by school. The four categories of dharmas in the Theravada Abhidhamma are Sita mind, consciousness, awareness, Setasika mental factors, mental events, associated mentality. There are 52 types. Rupa physical occurrences, material form, 28 types. Nibbana extinction, cessation. This dharma is unconditioned it neither arises nor ceases due to causal interaction. The Sarvastivada Abhidharma also used these, along with a fifth category, factors dissociated from thought, Chittaviprayuktasamskara. The Sarvastivadas also included three dharmas in the fourth, unconditioned. Category instead of just one, the Dharma of space and two states of cessation. The Abhidharma project was thus to provide a completely exhaustive account of every possible type of conscious experience in terms of its constituent factors and their relations. The Theravada tradition holds that there were 82 types of possible dhammas 82 types of occurrences in the experiential world, while the general Sarvastivada tradition eventually enumerated 75 dharma types. For the Abhidharmikas, truth was twofold and there are two ways of looking at reality. One way is the way of everyday experience and of normal worldly persons. This is the category of the nominal and the conceptual panyati, and is termed the conventional truth However, the way of the Abhidharma, and hence the way of enlightened persons like the Buddha, who have developed the true insight vipassana, sees reality as the constant stream of collections of dharmas, and this way of seeing the world is ultimate truth paramartha sadhya. As the Indian Buddhist Vasubandhu writes, anything the idea of which does not occur upon division or upon mental analysis, such as an object like a pot, that is a conceptual fiction. The ultimately real is otherwise. For Vasubandhu then, something is not the ultimately real if it disappears under analysis, but is merely conventional. The ultimate goal of the Abhidharma is nirvana and hence the Abhidharmikas systematize dharmas into those which are skillful kusala, purify the mind and lead to liberation, and those which are unskillful and do not. The Abhidharma then has a soteriological purpose, first and foremost and its goal is to support Buddhist practice and meditation. By carefully watching the coming and going of dhammas, and being able to identify which ones are wholesome and to be cultivated, and which ones are unwholesome and to be abandoned, the Buddhist meditator makes use of the Abhidharma as a schema to liberate his mind and realize that all experiences are impermanent, not self, unsatisfactory and therefore not to be clung to. Topic. Svabhava The Abhidharmikas often used the term svabhava Pali, sabhava, to explain the causal workings of dharmas. This term was used in different ways by the different Buddhist schools. This term does not appear in the sutras. The Abhidharmakasabhasya states, Dharma means upholding, namely, upholding intrinsic nature svabhava, while the Theravadan commentaries holds that, Dhammas are so called because they bear their intrinsic natures, or because they are born by causal conditions. Dharmas were also said to be distinct from each other by their intrinsic, unique characteristics svalaksana. 
the examination of these characteristics was held to be extremely important. The Sarvastivada Mahavabhasa states, Abhidharma is precisely the analysis of the Svalaksana and Samanya Laksana of dharmas. According to Peter Harvey, the Theravadan view of dharmas was that they are dhammas because they uphold their own nature, sabhava. They are dhammas because they are upheld by conditions or they are upheld according to their own nature ASL.39. Here own nature would mean characteristic nature, which is not something inherent in a dhamma as a separate ultimate reality, but arise due to the supporting conditions both of other dhammas and previous occurrences of that dhamma. The Visuddhimagga of Buddhaghosa, the most influential classical Theravada treatise, states that not self does not become apparent because it is concealed by compactness. When one does not give attention to the various elements which make up the person, the Paramatthamanyajusa Visuddhimajjadika of Akariya Dhammapala, a later Theravada commentary on the Visuddhimagga, refers to the fact that we often assume unity and compactness in phenomena and functions which are instead made up of various elements, but when one sees that these are merely empty dhammas, one can understand the not-self characteristic. When they are seen after resolving them by means of knowledge into these elements, they disintegrate like froth subjected to compression by the hand. They are mere states occurring due to conditions and void. In this way the characteristic of not-self becomes more evident. The Sarvastivadins saw dharmas as the ultimately real entities sad dravya, though they also held that dharmas were dependently originated. For the Sarvastivadins, a synonym for svabhava is avayaya a part, the smallest possible unit which cannot be analyzed into smaller parts and hence it is ultimately real as opposed to only conventionally real such as a chariot or a person. However, the Sarvastivadins did not hold that dharmas were completely independent of each other, as the Mahavabhasa states, "...conditioned dharmas are weak in their intrinsic nature, they can accomplish their activities only through mutual dependence." And, "...they have no sovereignty they are dependent on others." Svabhava in the early Abhidhamma texts was then not a term which meant ontological independence, metaphysical essence or underlying substance, but simply referred to their characteristics, which are dependent on other conditions and qualities. According to Ronkin, in the early Sarvastivada exegetical texts, then, svabhava is used as an atemporal, invariable criterion determining what a dharma is, not necessarily that a dharma exists. The concern here is primarily with what makes categorial types of dharma unique, rather than with the ontological status of dharmas. However, in the later Sarvastivada texts, like the Mahavabhasa, the term svabhava began to be defined more ontologically as the really existing intrinsic nature specifying individual dharmas. Other Abhidharma schools did not accept the svabhava concept. The Prajñaptivadins denied the ultimate reality of all dharmas and held that everything, even dharmas, is characterized by prajñapti provisional designation or fictitious construction. The Vinasikas held that all dharmas were without svabhava. 
This view that dharmas are empty or void is also found in the Lokanuvartana Sutra, the Sutra of Conformity with the World, which survives in Chinese and Tibetan translation, and may have been a scripture of the Purvasalas, which was a sub school of the Mahasamgika. Topic. Causality and dependent origination Another important project for the Abhidharmikas was to outline a theory of causality, especially of how momentary dharmas relate to each other through causes and conditions. The Sarvastivadin analysis focused on six causes hichu, four conditions pratyaya, and five effects phala. According to K. L. Damajati, for the Sarvastivada school, causal efficacy is the central criterion for the reality, existence astitva, of a dharma and hence they were also sometimes called the hetuvada school. A dharma is real because it is a cause and it has effects, if it had no causal efficacy, it would not exist. The six causes outlined by the Sarvastivada are Efficient cause karana hichu, dharma A, causes dharma B Homogeneous cause sabhaga hichu, dharma A 1, causes another dharma A 2, Universal cause Sarvatraga Hichu, a homogeneous cause, pertaining only to defiled dharmas. Retribution cause Vipaka Hichu leads to karmic retribution. Co-existent cause Sahabu Hichu, a cause which arises from the mutuality of all dharmas, a simultaneous causality. Conjoined cause Samprayuktika Hichu. In the Mahavabhasa treatment of dependent origination, four different types are outlined. Momentary Sanika, causation, as when all twelve moments of the chain are realized in a single moment of action. Serial Sambandika causation, in which dependent origination is viewed in reference to the relationship between cause and effect. Static Avisthika causation, in which dependent origination involves twelve distinct periods of the five aggregates. Prolonged prakarsika causation, in which that sequence of causation occurs over three lifetimes. The Sarvastivada Vibhasa Sastrans accepted only static dependent origination. The last book of the Pali Abhidhamma, the Patana, sets out the main Theravada theory on conditioned relations and causality. The Patana is an exhaustive examination of the conditioned nature of all dhammas. The introduction begins with a detailed list of 24 specific types of conditioned relationships that may pertain between different factors. The majority of these conditions have counterparts in the Sarvastivada Abhidharma. The Pali Abhidhamatasangaha reduces them all to four main types. The Satrantika school used a theory of seeds bija in the mental continuum to explain causal interaction between past and present dharmas. This theory was later developed by the Yogacara school in their theory of storehouse consciousness. Topic. Temporality A prominent argument between the Abhidharmikas was on the philosophy of time. The Sarvastivadin tradition held the view expressed in the Vijñānakāya that dharmas exist in all three times, past, present, future, hence the name of their school means, "...theory of all exists." The Satrantika, Vibhajyavada and Theravada schools argued against this eternalist view in favor of presentism only the present moment exists. 
This argument was so central, that North Indian Buddhist schools were often named according to their philosophical position. According to Vasubandhu, those who hold all exists the past, the present, and the future belong to the Sarvastivada. Those, on the other hand, who hold that some exist, viz., the present and the past karma that has not given fruit but not those that have given fruit or the future, are followers of the Vibhajyavada. Vasubandhu initially wrote in favor of Sarvastivada, and later critiqued this position. The Sarvastivada Vaibhasika also held an atomistic conception of time which divided time into discrete indivisible moments and saw all events as lasting only for a minute instant and yet also existing in all three times. Theravadins also held a theory of momentariness, Kanavada, but it was less ontological than Sarvastivada and more focused on the psychological aspects of time. The Theravada divided every Dhamma into three different instants of origination upadakana, endurance, thidikana, and cessation. Bhangakana. They also held that only mental events were momentary, material events could endure for longer. Topic. Rebirth and personal identity A key problem which the Abhidharmikas wished to tackle was the question of how rebirth and karma works if there is no self to be reborn apart from the five aggregates. The Patana includes the earliest Pali canonical reference to an important answer to this question, Bhavanga, or life continuum. Bhavanga, literally, the limb on which existence occurs is that substratum which maintains the continuity of the individual throughout that life the sarvastivadins had a similar term nikayasabhagata this concept is similar to the yogacara doctrine of the storehouse consciousness alaya which was later associated with the buddha nature doctrine this problem was also taken up by a group of Buddhist schools termed the Pujalavadins or personalists, which included the Vatsiputriya, the Dharmadariya, the Bhadrayaniya, the Samatiya, and the Shanagarika. These schools posited the existence of a person pudula, or self, which had a real existence that was not reducible to streams and collections of dharmas. They also often used other terms to refer to this real self, such as Atman and Jiva, which are words for the immortal soul in Hinduism and Jainism respectively. They seem to have held that the self was part of a fifth category of existence, the inexpressible. This was a radically different view than the not-self view held by the mainstream Buddhist schools and this theory was a major point of controversy and was thoroughly attacked by other Buddhist schools such as the Theravadins, Sarvastivadins and later Mahayanists. The Sarvastivadin Abhidharmikas also developed the novel idea of an intermediate state between death and the next rebirth. The Purvasela, Samatiya, Vatsiputriya, and later Mahisasaka schools accepted this view, while the Theravadins, Vibhajyavada, Mahasangika, and the Sariputrabhidharma Sastra of the Dharmaguptakas rejected it. <laughs> Atomism Some Abhidharmikas such as the Sarvastivadins also defended an atomic theory. However unlike the Hindu Vaisheshika school, Abhidharmic atoms are not permanent, but momentary. 
the Vebasika held that an atom is the smallest analyzable unit of matter rupa, hence it is a conceptual atom prajnapti paramanu, though this also corresponds to a real existing thing. The Mahabhivasa states, An atom paramanu is the smallest rupa. It cannot be cut, broken, penetrated, it cannot be taken up, abandoned, ridden on, stepped on, struck or dragged. It is neither long nor short, square nor round, regular nor irregular, convex nor concave. It has no smaller parts, it cannot be decomposed, cannot be seen, heard, smelled, touched. It is thus that the Paramanu is said to be the finest sarva -suksma of all rupas. Topic: <laughs> Theravada Abhidhamma. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Constitution. The Abhidhamma Pataka is the third pataka, or basket, of the Tipitaka Sanskrit, Tripitaka, the canon of the Theravada school of Buddhism. It consists of seven sections or books. Dhammasangani enumeration of factors describes the fundamental phenomena dhamma which constitute human experience. Vibhanga analysis an analysis of various topics by a variety of methods, including catechism, using material from the Dhammasangani. Dhatukatha discussion of elements some interrelations between various items from the first two books, formulated as sets of questions and answers. Pugalapanati descriptions of individuals and enumeration of the qualities of certain different personality types. These types were believed to be useful in formulating teachings to which an individual would respond positively. Kathavathu, points of controversy a collection of debates on points of doctrine, traditionally said to have been compiled by Magaliputta Tissa at the Buddhist council sponsored by King Ashoka, which took place in the 3rd century, BCE. Yamaka the pairs deals with various questions relating to interrelations within various lists of items here the items belong to the same list whereas in the datukatha they are in different lists patana foundational conditions or relations the laws of interaction by which the dhammas described in the dhamma sangani operate Topic: History. The Theravada Abhidhamma, like the rest of the Tipitaka, was orally transmitted until the first century BCE. Due to famines and constant wars, the monks responsible for recording the oral tradition felt that there was a risk of portions of the canon being lost so the Abhidhamma was written down for the first time along with the rest of the canon. These had all been published in Pali Canon in the 1st century BCE at Alu Vihara Temple in Sri Lanka, and most have been translated into English by the Pali Text Society as well. Some scholars date the seven Pali Abhidhamma books from about 400 BCE to about 250 BCE, the first book being the oldest of the seven and the fifth being the newest. Additional post-canonical texts composed in the following centuries attempted to further clarify the analysis presented in the Abhidhamma texts. The best known of such texts are the Visuddhimagga of Buddhahosa and the Abhidhamatta Sangaha of Aniruddha. Other Sri Lankan compendiums of Abhidhamma include the Namarupaparasheda analysis of mind and matter, 
Parmatavinichaya, an inquiry into what is ultimate, Abhidhamavatara, a descent into the introduction of Abhidhamma, Ruparupavi Bhaga, analysis into mind and matter, Sakasamke Pa, summary of truth, Mohavachedani, that which dispels delusion, Kimapakarana, the treat as by Kima, and Namakaradipak, movement of mind, compiled in Burma, early Western translators of the Pali Canon found the Abhidhamma Pitaka the least interesting of the three sections of the Tippet aka Caroline Augusta Foley Rhys Davids, a Pali scholar and the wife of Pali Text Society founder Thomas William Rhys Davids, famously described the ten chapters of the Yamaka as ten valleys of dry bones. As a result, this Abhidhamic aspect of Buddhism was little studied in the West until the latter half of the 20th century. Interest in the Abhidhamma has grown in the West as better scholarship on Buddhist philosophy has gradually revealed more information about its origins and significance. Within the Theravada tradition the prominence of the Abhidhamma has varied considerably from country to country with Buddhism in Burma placing the most emphasis on the study of the Abhidhamma. <laughs> Theravada commentaries In addition to the canonical Abhidharma, a variety of commentaries and manuals were written to serve as introductions to the Abhidharma. The best known commentaries in the Theravada tradition are Vimitimaga, Path of Freedom, c. 1st or 2nd century CE, Visuddhimagga, Path of Purification. By Buddhahosa, fifth century, a comprehensive manual that contains much of the Theravada Abhidharma, one of the most popular texts in Theravada Buddhism. Abhidhamavatara, Introduction to Abhidharma, by Buddhadatta, a direct introduction to the Theravada Abhidharma. Abhidhamatasangaha, Compendium of the Topics of the Abhidharma, by Anuruddha, 12th century, the most commonly used introductory manual in the contemporary Theravada tradition. Atthasalini, the Expositor, by Buddhahosa, explains the meaning of terms that occur in the Dhammasanganiyothar commentaries include Sammohavinodini, the Dispeller of Delusion. Vibhanga at the Katha, commentary to the Vibhanga. Pankapakaranatakatha, commentary on the remaining five books of the Abhidhamma Pataka. Abhidhamma Maladika, sub commentary to the commentaries of the Abhidhamma. Anatika, sub commentaries to the sub commentaries. Topic. Sarvastivada Abhidharma Topic. Overview The other major Indian Abhidharma tradition was that of the Sarvastivada school, which was dominant in North India, especially Kashmir and also in Bactria and Gandhara. This is the Abhidharma tradition that is studied in East Asian Buddhism and also in Tibetan Buddhism. Like the Theravada Abhidharma, the Sarvastivada Abhidharma also consists of seven texts. However, comparison of the content of the Sarvastivada texts with that of the Theravada Abhidhamma reveals that it is unlikely that this indicates that one textual tradition originated from the other. In particular, the Theravada Abhidharma contains two texts, the Katha Vathu and Pugala Panati, that some consider entirely out of place in an Abhidharma collection. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Core texts. 
The texts of the Sarvastivadin Abhidharma are Samgitiparyaya discourses on gathering together, Dharmaskanda aggregation of dharmas, Prajñatasastra treatise on designations, Dadakaya body of elements, Vijñanakaya body of consciousness. Prakaranapada exposition together these comprise the six treatises Chinese Lu Zu Lun Sanskrit Sad Pada Sastra Jnanaprasthana foundation of knowledge also known as Astaskanda or Astagranthayazomitra is said to have likened this text to the body of the above six treatises referring to them as its legs padas Topic: Vibhasa Compendia. The Jnanaprasthana became the basis for Sarvastivada exegetical works called Vibhasa, which were composed in a time of intense sectarian debate among the Sarvastivadins in Kashmir. These compendia not only contain sutra references and reasoned arguments but also contain new doctrinal categories and positions. The most influential of these was the Mahavabhasa, Great Commentary, a massive work which became the central text of the Vaibhasika tradition who became the Kashmiri Sarvastivada orthodoxy under the patronage of the Kushan Empire. There are also two other extant Vibhasa compendia, though there is evidence for the existence of many more of these works which are now lost. The Vibhasasastra of Satapani and the Abhidharmavibhasasastra translated by Buddhavarman c. 437 and 439 AD are the other extant Vibhasa works. Topic. Sastras In addition to the canonical Sarvastivadin Abhidharma, a variety of expository texts or sastras were written to serve as overviews and introductions to the Abhidharma. The best known belonging to the Sarvastivadin tradition are Abhidharma Hridaya Sastra, the heart of Abhidharma, by the Tokarian Dharmasrasthan, circa 1st, century BC, Bactria. It is the oldest example of a systematized Sarvastivada dogmatic text. Abhidharma Amrtarasa, the taste of the deathless, by the Tokarian Gosaka, 2nd century AD, based on the above work. Abhidharma Hridaya Sastra, The Heart of Abhidharma by Upasanta, also based on Dharmasrasthan's Hrdaya Sastra. Samyuktabhidharma Hridaya by Dharmatrada, also based on Dharmasrasthan's Hrdaya Sastra. Abhidharmakosha, Treasury of Higher Knowledge by Vasubandhu, 4th or 5th century, a highly influential commentary in Chinese and Tibetan Buddhism, which includes an auto-commentary by Vasubandhu, the Abhidharmakasabhasya, that critiques orthodox Vaibhasika views from a Satrantika perspective. This is the main text used to study Abhidharma in Tibet and East Asia. Samathadeva's Abhidharmakasopaika Tika, a commentary on the Kosa. Nyayanusara Sastra, Conformance to Correct Principle, by Samgabhadra, an attempt to criticize Vasubandhu and defend orthodox Vaibhasika views. Abhidharmasamaya Pradipika, a compendium of the above. Abhidharmavatara, Descent into the Abhidharma by the Satrantika master Skandila 5th century. Abhidharma Dipa and its auto-commentary, the Vibhasa Prabha Vrtti, a post-Samgabhadra Vaibhasika treatise which follows closely the Abhidharma Kosa and attempts to defend Vaibhasika orthodoxy.
Topic: <laughs> Mahasamgika and Dharmaguptaka. According to some sources, Abhidharma was not accepted as canonical by the Mahasamgika school. The Theravadan Dipavamsa, for example, records that the Mahasamgikas had no Abhidharma. However, other sources indicate that there were such collections of Abhidharma. During the early 5th century, the Chinese pilgrim Faxian is said to have found a Mahasamgika Abhidharma at a monastery in Pataliputra. When Xuanzang visited Danyakataka, he wrote that the monks of this region were Mahasamgikas, and mentions the Purvasalas specifically. Near Danyakataka, he met two Mahasamgika bhikkhus and studied Mahasamgika Abhidharma with them for several months, during which time they also studied various Mahayana sastras together under Xuanzang's direction. On the basis of textual evidence as well as inscriptions at Nagarjunakanda, Joseph Walzer concludes that at least some Mahasamgika sects probably had an Abhidharma collection, and that it likely contained five or six books, the Sariputra Abhidharma Sastra Shilifu Apitan Loon Shelifu Apitan Loon T. 1548 is a complete Abhidharma text that is thought to come from the Dharmaguptaka sect. The only complete edition of this text is that in Chinese. Sanskrit fragments from this text have been found in Bamiyan, Afghanistan, and are now part of the Shoyan collection MS 2375, 08. The manuscripts at this find are thought to have been part of a monastery library of the Mahasamgika Lokateravada sect. Topic: <laughs> Mahayana Abhidharma. In addition to the Theravada and Sarvastivadin Abhidharma traditions, a third complete system of Abhidharma thought is elaborated in certain works of the Mahayana Yogacara tradition, principally in the following commentaries. Abhidharma Samukhaya, Compendium of Abhidharma, by Asanga. Vijñapti Matrata Siddhi or Cheng Waishi Loon. Discourse on the Perfection of Consciousness Only, by Xuanzang, a commentary on Vasubandhu's Trimsaka Vijnaptamatrata, 30 verses. While this Yogacaran Abhidharma is based on the Sarvastivadin system, it also incorporates aspects of other Abhidharma systems and present a complete Abhidharma in accordance with a Mahayana Yogacara view that the mind alone is ultimately real. Yogacarans developed an Abhidharma literature set within a Mahayana framework. John Keenan, who has translated the Samdhanirmocana Sutra into English, writes, The Yogacara masters inherited the mystical approach of the Prajnaparamita texts. However, they did not reject the validity of theoretical Abhidharma. Rather they attempted to construct a critical understanding of the consciousness that underlies all meaning, both mystical and theoretical. Their focus was on doctrine, but as it flowed from the practice of meditative centering yoga, rather than as it was understood in acts of conceptual apprehension. There is also plenty of Abhidharmic material mainly Sarvastivada in the Mahaprajñaparamitalpadisa, traditionally attributed to Nagarjuna. Topic. Satyasiddhi Sastra The Satyasiddhi Sastra, also called the Tattvasiddhi Sastra, is an extant Abhidharma text from the Mahasamgika Bausrutiya school, which was popular in Chinese Buddhism. 
This Abhidharma is now contained in the Chinese Buddhist canon, in 16 fascicles Taisho Tripitaka 1646. Its authorship is attributed to Harivarman, a 3rd century monk from central India. Paramartha cites this Bausrutya Abhidharma as containing a combination of Hinayana and Mahayana doctrines, and Joseph Walzer agrees that this assessment is correct. Ian Charles Harris also characterizes the text as a synthesis of Hinayana and Mahayana, and notes that its doctrines are very close to those in Madhyamaka and Yogacara works. The Satyasiddhi Sastra maintained great popularity in Chinese Buddhism, and even lead to the formation of its own school of Buddhism in China, the Satyasiddhi School, or Qingxi Zong, Xiangxi Zong which was founded in 412 CE. As summarized by Nan Y. Qin, Various Buddhist schools sprang to life, such as the school based on the three Madhyamaka Sastras, the school based on the Abhidharmakosa, and the school based on the Satyasiddhi Sastra. These all vied with each other, producing many wondrous offshoots, each giving rise to its own theoretical system. The Satyasiddhi school taught a progression of 27 stations for cultivating realization, based upon the teachings of the Satyasiddhi Sastra. The Satyasiddhi school took Harivarman as its founder in India, and Kumarajiva as the school's founder in China. The Satyasiddhi school is counted among the ten schools of Tang dynasty Buddhism. From China, the Satyasiddhi school was transmitted to Japan in 625 CE, where it was known as Jōjitsu Shū. The Japanese Satyasiddhi school is known as one of the six great schools of Japanese Buddhism in the Nara period, 710 to 794 CE. Topic. See also Index of Buddhism-related articles Secular Buddhism